My name is Heather Zerke. I am the president of Berea Mid Park Middle School PTA in uh, Middleburg Heights, Ohio. I have two middle school students. I have a, fifth, a sixth grade son and an eighth grade daughter. Um, we are a busy family. I grew up in a small town that um, is predominantly white. Um, and grew up a mixed race kid, uh, black and white. And um, I was always aware of, um, of, of being different from most people in my community, but I don't think it really became an issue for me until I entered middle school. And it was in middle school when um, I, I began to experience racism. It was probably always there but it was sort of an in-your-face experience in middle school. It was in middle school when I first heard the term Oreo, when I heard the word skunk baby. And I don't think that all of the kids even understood that what they were saying was mean. Those were just words that were used in their families to describe somebody like me. And so as my children are now in middle school, and um, I'm hearing about their experiences. They're having a different experience than, than what I have, but it's bringing back memories for me about what it was like to be a kid experiencing racism and feeling afraid to talk about it, uh, believing that no one would really care or understand. And so I have wanted to create a space where kids like me can talk about what they might be going through. Our PTA at Berea Mid Park Middle School made the decision that we would devote all of our monthly meetings to conversations about DEI. And when I had this idea, I wasn't sure what that was going to look like, um, but I started talking with, with other PTA leaders about it. And what I found was that there was 100% support for the idea. Our series called The Race Talk turned into a three-part series. We didn't know at the beginning that it was going to be a three-part series, but we had a community member come in and help us design a program, or she at least gave us a place to start. And I was very nervous about what these programs were gonna look like. I was very concerned that, that we might have really tense and uncomfortable conversations. Um, and so we decided that we would create a game that's sort of a survey to take people's temperature, how they're feeling about um, racial inequity and injustice in our community. And we had about 10 questions and we polled our audience. We went through each question and then we talk about the answers. We had the polling results in real time so that we could talk about the information that we were all seeing. And it was, it was very positive. Um, there were a lot of good things that came out of it and there were some things that, that were upsetting and to, any, to all of us. Um, but it was really powerful. And the follow-up to that first conversation, what we wanted to do was to really encourage parents to start talking to their kids about race. That was really the point of part one. And so part two was bringing parents together and asking them, how did it go? When you talk to your kids about race, what did it look like? And so we had parents talking and we had um, a diverse panel of parents talking about what their conversations look like. And of course, it's very different for black and brown families. Those conversations are different from the ones that white families are having with their kids. And so we had students come back for the third program. We asked them, what's it like when you talk with your parents about race? And we brought our, our survey game back from the very first program and we asked the kids these same questions. So we already had our material. We just asked the kids, now tell us what you think about racial injustice in, in our community and what's it like for you as a student? And it was another tremendous program. And we had a student facilitate um, that program also. Um, and so it's just one of those things I think that um, I could have 
or we as a PTA could have talked ourselves out of it because it's a little bit scary, um, but it, it turned out to be just incredibly worthwhile. What I have learned through having these conversations is that it's just important to have the conversation. Sometimes I think it fe may feel like that's not enough, that we want to be taking more drastic action. We wanna have change, we wanna have it now. But just having the conversation, just having a safe space for students to talk about what they're going through, um, to hear students talk about how they are afraid to interact with police officers in sixth grade, seventh grade, that they have these real fears. Um, and to hear parents talk about how they sometimes don't feel welcome in the community, um, our black and brown families who just feel disconnected from the community. I think it was really powerful for neighbors to hear this, for um, the white people in our community to hear this from their neighbors. And to hear people reach out and through a Zoom call, but to say, I'm sorry that you feel this way and we want this to change. We want it to be better. Um, it's just incredibly powerful. I wanted to include students in our conversations about race because I remembered as a middle schooler who was experiencing racism that I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. At least I felt like there was no one that would understand or would care. Um, being in the, the racial minority in my town, um, I really didn't want to emphasize my difference. I just wanted to blend. Um, but I know that that's not healthy and, it, and that it's important that kids know that there are adults that care about them and care about their experience and want to help. And so, so we brought kids in and, um, and what they said to us was so, it, it was so enlightening, um, you know, and I think it, it was really empowering for the students too, since we had them moderate their own conversation. And so they controlled the questions and they were not censored. They could say what they felt. They shared with us some of the interactions that they have had with teachers. And, and we were very fortunate to have our principal. Our, our principal has been a tremendous partner and, and attends all of our programs. And so he could hear firsthand from students what their experience in school has been like. I would recommend to PTA leaders that wanna have conversations about race that you think about who is in your network that might come alongside you to help you. Um, it's, it can be intimidating, it can be a scary thing, but I think that when you find your allies and you find people that are experienced in facilitating conversations about race, maybe that's not you, but there are people around you that will come and will help you. You just have to find those people. I would start inside your school, talk to your school leaders it's very likely that the staff has been having conversations about DEI. Who is leading those conversations? Um, who can bring parents into those conversations or who can lead PTA groups in those kinds of talks? Um, I reached out to a professional uh, diversity facilitator, somebody that I have worked with in my professional life. And I hoped that she might be willing to come in and and um, you know do some programming for us, maybe um, for free because we're a PTA. Um, I wanted to work that that professional connection, but she really did me one better by referring me to somebody that actually works inside the district, is already working with students, who's well connected in the community. And having an outsider come in, I think it can be um, a really positive thing, but having somebody who's inside the community who already knows our people, who already knows so many of our students, um, it, was, it was a tremendous partnership. It's a partnership that continues. 
If you're feeling afraid about it, I would encourage you to push through those fears and uh, just know how important it is and know what a positive impact it could have on your community and on your school, and especially for your students who may be afraid to talk about what they're going through. Um, create that space for them so that they can be heard and their experience can be validated and you can know um, where you need to start to try to make change. How can you help these students feel more safe? How can you help them feel more welcome in their schools? You can't know what their needs are unless you talk with them and, and listen to them.